Hi, so what I wanted to show you today is how to record and replay gRPC messages using Traffic Parrot. So we're going to go to Traffic Parrot documentation to gRPC and have a quick look at how that works. So what typically happens in gRPC is you're going to have a gRPC client that sends a request message to the gRP server and then the gRP server responds with a message to the gRPC client. So where Traffic Parrot comes in is is first of all gonna record the traffic. So the gRPC client and gRPC server are gonna have a virtual service traffic parrot in the middle. And the message is gonna be passed on to traffic parrot and then um, forwarded to the gRPC server and vice versa, the response message is gonna go through traffic parrot. But the mapping between record uh, re request and response messages is going to be saved in the meantime and that's going to be done uh, using optionally provided protofiles okay once you've recorded the traffic what we're going to do is be able to replay it so we don't have to use the server anymore all we're using is the client and we can simulate very hypothetical situations just by using uh, traffic parrot virtual services okay all right, so let's go ahead and do that. So first of all, let me show you um, an example gRPC client and gRPC server. So what I've got here is a sample application, a gRPC shop. I'm going to start the client and I'm going to start the server. Okay. It's a simple application. The, um, the client and server are going to be sending messages to each other. So when I press order, there's a message being sent from the shopping application to the shop server to make an order. And then the uh, server sends back a response saying order process for SKU one and quantity one. Let's say I'm going to change this to 10 and this to 12. And there you go. I've ordered 10 items of ID 12. Yeah. So there we go. Um, this is how the gRPC client and gRPC server look like. So now let's go ahead and um, record those messages using Traffic Parrot. So we're going to put Traffic Parrot in the middle. Yeah. So I've got a Traffic Parrot trial downloaded here. I'm going to extract it here. And once it's extracted, we're going to start it up. There we go. So let's start traffic parrot. I'm going to do that by just double clicking the start file. And there it is, traffic parrot's running. So we can look at traffic parrot and go straight to gRPC record. Yeah. So what I'm going to be recording is the uh, shop server, which is running on localhost 12345 because that's what we've configured it to run on. I'm going to press start recording and there's the recorder running. So what we've got right now is this part so that the virtual service is pointing at the gRPC server. Now we need to point the gRPC client at the virtual service. So the virtual service is running a localhost 50052. So instead of pointing it at the real server, we're going to point it at our uh, virtual service and press order. And unfortunately, we're getting a gRPC exception. Why is that? Well, let's have a look at the log files. Scroll to the very bottom. And we see here that the server doesn't uh, support gRPC reflection. Uh, if it did support that, we could use it. And then Traffic Parrot, if, since it didn't find um, the reflection mechanism on the server, uh, it tried to locate the protofile and it couldn't find it either. So basically, there's no way for Traffic Parrot to understand the gRPC traffic. So what we're going to do in this case is go back to our application, the gRPC shop, and it comes with a provider with a provided protofile. So I'm going to copy that file to Traffic Parrot proto directory. And this is the gRPC proto file that defines the service. So right now, if I send this message, uh, send this order again, I got a successful response. 
So what this means is traffic ha traffic parrot has proxied the response, the request message, and then proxied the response message and recorded the mapping here. So let's have a look at that mapping. And there it is. It's recording a mapping to this gRPC method or the purchase. Uh, the request body was uh, looked like this and the response looked like this, okay? So right now, if I stop the recorder and stop the server, the client is still going to work. Yeah, why is that? Well, because traffic parrot is still running this request to response mapping. All right, so um, we're in this um, um, stage right now where the client is talking only to sending messages only to the virtual service traffic parrot and there's no gRPC server involved in it as well. So what we can do the, uh, here right now is take it to the next level and simulate hypothetical situations and different types of dynamic responses, okay? So let's say I wanna order uh, more than one item, two items, okay? Let's try and order that. But Traffic Parrot comes back with no responses match the given request. Why is that? Let's have a look at Traffic Parrot. And the reason for that is we're matching on the request body uh, JSON. Yeah? So we're, we're only uh, uh, matching that uh, the requests that have SKU of 1 and quantity of 1. So we can, what we can say here is that we're going to match any numbers. Okay, and what this means is matches JSON with any numbers. What this means is we're going to start getting these responses now. Uh, let me clear this uh, screen. And so now if I send a quantity of two, uh, what's going to happen is we get a response back. Yeah, three. There we go. Unfortunately, we can still see here that the SKU and quantity returned by the virtual service is one. But the client says it's ordered something else, three of one, right? Because that's what we've put on the UI here. So the reason for that is because um, this mapping has got a hard coded response. It's always returning the same thing, which is um, order process SKU1 quantity 1, which is what we've recorded actually. You can make this um, um, you can make this response dynamic by using um, the data from the request. Yeah, so we can take the data of SKU and quantity from the request and put it into the response. How do you do that? Um, you go to traffic parallel documentation, you look at how to extend it and you're going to find in here something called JSON path. And JSON path basically can extract an attribute from a JSON request. So for example, in our case, we're gonna extract bits of the request body. So the way we do this is we use the handlebars notation. We say JSON path, JSON path request.body and provide the, um, the, the JSON path to the uh, element we're interested in. So we're gonna be interested in the quantity. Okay, and then uh, we're interested instead of the hard coded SKU value, we're going to be interested in request body SKU. Okay, save that, run it, and there we go. We're getting a dynamic response. Yeah, so right now, what the virtual service or API mock is returning is a dynamic response based on the request, okay? So again, what have we done here? Let's go back to the gRPC documentation. So we've started off by demonstrating how a gRPC shop client shopping application connects to a gRPC shopping server. Then what we've done is recorded those messages using a provided protocol file. And then what we've done was um, replay those messages um, without having to uh, connect to the server anymore. And the next step was to generate dynamic messages using um, data from the request. 
Okay? Thanks for watching.